Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Iron Man. Last video, we got Jad Task, we got our second fire cape, unlocked the Inferno music track, not to actually do the Inferno, but just for the music cape eventually. We got Calvite Queen Task, which took about 16 hours to complete, and here is what the log is looking like after we got that done. We got two heads, two Dragon 2 H's, and one D chain. The other one we got a long time ago from Dust Devils. So because we got the Calfite Queen head, we got the Desert Elite Diary done, and the other head I turned in for Prayer XP. But the first head we got at 15 KC, which made the task so much nicer to do. And even by the end of the task, I honestly am not feeling burnt from that boss, so I'm looking forward to getting Calfite Queen again in the future. Uh, at the moment though, we do not have a Slayer task, so we're gonna go get one, and that's pretty much where we're at in the account, just doing Slayer forever. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to 95 Slayer, which isn't like a big goal for me. I don't have the goal specifically for unlocking Hydra. I'm just looking forward to doing a bunch of different bossing on this account. But I guess we'll go grab another Slayer task and see how we're gonna be starting off this video. Oh yeah, before we get too much into Slayer, I remember there's something I wanted to do, because I was using Venge for the last Slayer task when I was killing Calfite Queen, and we have all these astral runes left over, and one of the portals I want to build in the Nexus to Lunar Isle uh, requires astral runes. So I'm going to go get the rest of the astral runes because we need 2,000 of them and all the other runes I need as well, and we'll go build that. And the reason for that is because whenever I want to go to Lunar Isle, I have to teleport to Waterbirth Island and then go through a couple of cutscenes going to the Pirate's Cove and then Lunar Isle. I could change spellbooks in the POH to the Lunar Spellbook and then home teleport to get here, but what if I want to go more than once every half hour? Plus you have to like sit around and wait, then you have to actually remember to switch the spellbook back afterwards. This will just be nice to have. Okay, it costs just over 300k to buy the remaining runes that we needed to add the Lunar Isle teleport into the Nexus. Confirm. There we go. And now we can easily get to Lunar Isle anytime. Although I do still have to get the Fremnic Elite Diary done so we're not required to have the Seal of Passage. See, I've never understood why people crash at places like this, like at Bloodvelt. I could understand crashing at Necreals or Dust Devils, but why for like a random monster that you could hop one world and immediately find an open one? I know Iron Man is obviously always a free world, but you'd think if someone's trying to AFK and proselyte, they'd probably want to find an empty world. Oh, all right, we got Jad Task. By the way, Fight Caves is a safe death if you didn't know, so if I die in there, all the stuff I have in Hispori or any other kind of death place, it's all going to be safe. Before I go in, I just unnoted a dose of Range Pot and sipped it. And now we have full range pots in the inventory as well. There we go, KC number three. Not the best PB. I wasn't trying to use too much rigor just because of the limited inventory with the prayer pots. But third fire cape. Uh, we need to build a stash unit with this one. There's the Abi uh, throwing ring thing. And I think we just buy that with Tackle. Okay, so hopefully this guy sells it. Tots. Yeah, that thing. Okay. All right, 130k spent on the gold leaf. The stash unit is built and the extra fire cape is now stored away, and every single fire cape we ever get in the future will be traded in for the Jad Pet. Or I should say, not getting the Jad Pet. Never getting lucky. Like usual, I've never been lucky on this account, ever. All right, so from Killing Calfite Queen, we have all these grimy herbs, so I'm gonna quickly clean all these, and then I'll make uh, 100 prayer pots because we don't have any stack of clean Ranar, so I'll just make those before we carry on with Slayer. First time using the perk of the Desert Amulet 4. Before, I only had one teleport per day to Narda, now it's unlimited teleports to make my unfinished potions. Okay, all the herbs are used up, well clean slash pure potted, and we got 12.7k herb XP out of that. Fun little fact, while you're doing Slayer, if you have pieces in Hispori, the pieces that you will get while doing Slayer will just continue on building the totem. It doesn't like start back from the beginning. So once we get one more piece, we can just finish the totem right away. And it's okay for it to be in here. That is 549 tasks in a row. So every 50th task, what I do is I go to Konar for the task for the extra point boost. Otherwise, I always do Duradel. Although if you get like one or two tasks, like Bronze Dragons, for example, and you have to cancel a couple tasks, maybe it's not worth it, but it's whatever. Dagnoths on Waterworth Island. We do still have to kill DKs for this diary task here. Um, that's the last task for the Fremnic Elite Diary, so I guess we may as well knock this out. DKs is kind of scary for UIM. It's probably the most risky boss now for UIM outside the Wildy, because when you die, it's kind of a bit of a run that could be annoying to get into the room, but 
Let's go gear up for that and get the diary done. So for the rune throne axe that we need to get through the dungeon to DKs, we can just buy one from this guy right here for pretty cheap. Okay, I just bought runes for blood spells. Uh, we have 20 mil GP in total in Nightmare Zone now. 100 cast should last like, at least for this first trip. I just want to at least get the diary done, then I guess we'll just stay as long as we can because once we get the diary done, then DKs will drop the noted bones, but for now they're not noted. They don't start dropping though until you actually get the diary done though and you like talk to the guy to claim the reward. So we would have to leave and then the middle of the trip to get that perk activated. I was too lazy to bring an explorer's ring or stamina. But I gotta wait for the run to restore right now, so I'll just show you like the setup that we're rocking with. Uh, I probably don't need this much cerebro, but I haven't done DKs in such a long time. The only DK I've done on this account was Rex, just to get the dragon axe a long time ago. You can see we have zero KC for Prime. No. Okay, well, we only have KC for Rex on this account haven't killed the others. The only thing I want the most from DKs besides like the pets would be the circle because we need that for a stash unit. If I get any rings, I would drop them over to my main later. The only rings I'd want on this account late game would be the suffering and the brimstone ring. I don't care for the others really. I don't know why I'm so nervous. It's just been so long and this is like, like it's not really even that risky. Like it wouldn't be terrible to get back here, I guess. We just gotta do it though, we'll just do it. Okay, we got the task done here, so once we finish this trip, we can go finish that diary. DKs are so nice with Rigor, SGS, Max Melees, Recline Gaming. It's the, have we gotten the Warriors Ring? We'll have to check the collection log after this trip but that's an Alk right there. Is that 36 KC at Rex? Those Spine Chaps would have been nice for that stash unit a long time ago, because it took me like an hour to get those just killing the regular Dagnoth dudes on Waterbirth, but I did not have the stuff for DKs at the time. Yo, is that Ranarweed? Yo, Herbal XP, let's freaking go. All right, first ever real trip of DKs done on the UIM. I wouldn't count Rex before from a long time ago as like a real DKs trip, but... Yeah, this is what we got. No noted bones, of course, but we got the warrior's ring, at least, which is pretty cool. Quickly use these for a little bit of prayer XP, even though they're not lit. Oh yeah, we got two brimstone keys, so I guess we should open those up before we get back to it. Okay. Oh, that's actually really good. <laughs> and that's a drop. Oh, that was the first warrior ring. That's good. It's uh, more completion on the log. That's really good. Okay, let's go uh, plant these magic seeds, and then we will complete the diary. All right, as usual, I will put all the rewards up on screen. Probably the most notable one would either be the noted DK's bones or the Fremnic boots, which now give unlimited teleports to Relica. So this will be nice once we do Vorkath, I guess, in the future. And for getting to the fishmonger here, whenever I go sacred eel fishing, this will probably be the best way to get the bait and the rod right away. Uh, we don't need to seal a passage anymore, so I used to run to this guy, Brent the Chieftain, over here. Every time I go to Lunar Isle to buy Astrals or something, we don't have to do that anymore. We can just teleport straight to Lunar Isle. Yeah, no DK's bones will be nice. I mean, we don't really need prayer XP for anything anymore on the account because we do have 85 prayer now. And we also get the 50,000 Herblor XP, which is always nice. All right, we got uh, 61 more DK's to go. Let's finish up this task strong and hopefully not blink. Look at this diary tab. We're so close, man. We could we could theoretically do this anytime. I just have to actually put the time in to like kill the Black Knights for the Faldor diary and then hunt all the Choppies for the Western Provinces diary. Other than that, we can pretty much just go do it. But not today, I wanna kill DKs. Okay, so what I do for DKs is I use my main instead of a pet rock to get through the first gate and then also have the rune throne axe on my main. So that way I can bring like, for example, the Explorer's Ring to restore my run. This is a multiplayer game, remember that. Sorry, toxic YouTuber. <laughs> oh, it's not multiplayer if it's just you twice. No way, I got me runes. All right, we'll do a, a spec for the video here. SGS goes off on uh, Supreme, here we go. Boom. Love it. All right, there's the end of the task. Unfortunately, we are in the Slayer Cave. Oh yeah, 300 points from the task. Um, but I don't feel like going into the other cave just to get one slash two more kills to get ranked. Um, I guess we are ranked for Rex now because you need 50 KC, but unfortunately not for Prime or Supreme, but that's okay. We will get that next time. We got one Brimstone key from that trip. Oh, nice. That's really good. Here's the loot from the second trip, or the very first trip, with the noted Dagnoth bones. Really good way to make money for a Normie account. For UIM, maybe not the best money, but it's a decent amount of prayer XP. It's not worth the time. I'd say getting Marantils just for like one task at a time because you have to thieve the seeds, 
plant them, wait for them to grow. So I'll just be using them on my guild altar. These aren't even the right burners, by the way. These are like ones that don't even give a boost. Uh, there is a method I'll show later on, probably when I'm doing Hydra that involves suiciding and going to the Wildy altar. Now the untrables drop on the ground, but we'll save that for a different video way in the future. We get 312.5 XP using Dagnoth bones on the guild altar. So from this task, just from these bones, that's 18,750 per XP that we're getting. So it's interesting, like after a DK's task, I'll have to sell off all these runes they had for the blood spells and then like uncharge the trident and sell back those runes as well but that is just part of the life of playing on ultimate iron man i don't know there's just something about seeing this inventory like this that just makes me feel like a real pvm -er. I love the SGS though, dude. It's so, so nice at DKs. Um, I was really nervous at the start. I did that all on stream as well, but um, alcohol, I mean, uh, the, the people in the stream hyped me up to, to go do it and it wasn't as bad as I was expecting, but if my internet did go out, that could have been a bad situation. Getting back there twice in an hour and taking the hits from the DKs too. Ah, Kraken task. Yes, I love this task so much. That means right now time to AFK fish sacred eels while I edit this video and then tomorrow we can have fun at my favorite boss in the game and also the second most difficult boss in the game right behind his fury. So I've been fishing for a few hours now and I just remembered something that I wanted to show. Before you get the Fremnik Elite Diary done, when you don't have the Seal of Passage, you get kicked off of Lunar Isle and people used to use that as a method of transportation to get to Relica by just teleporting to Lunar Isle, but once you got the Elite Diary done in the past, you weren't able to use that method anymore because you wouldn't get kicked off the island because they trusted you without the Seal of Passage. Um, but recently it was just pulled and passed into the game on April 30th, 2020. There's now this uh, return orb right over here that you can just use and it teleports you to Relica. So even if you have the Fremnic Elite Diary done, you can still get back over here. That's a cool animation too. It's probably not that relevant because the Fremnic Boots will take us right here as well, but it's interesting. Mod Ash posted on Twitter today about an update he's been working on. Also, congrats on 16 years of Jagex. But he's been working on a massive update to the costume room as you can see right here. Uh, he wants to make the interface like this where you can store every single item separately and the whole UIM Discord has been blowing up just discussing this change which is probably going to be pulled soon. And dude, even Mod Ash just joined the UIM Discord. I think it's a great update for regular accounts and uh, Mod Ash also said that there could be exceptions made for UIM. And besides just like the clue scroll stuff like you could see here like the blessed e hide sets which would be big enough in itself. There's also like Justiciar, Ancestral, Inquisitor and a lot more stuff too. And that'd be such an insane change for UIM to be able to just store and take out one piece at a time instead of having to collect the full set and then store that full set. We've had a lot of discussion in the UIM Discord about this potential change to UIM with Mod Ash talking as well. And it seems like the compromise that may possibly come out of this is being able to store individual pieces of sets but not being able to take them out until you have the full set. Like for example, for a blessed dehyde set, uh, the perk of finishing the full entire set, which would be very difficult to do, would be being able to use pieces of that set. But this hasn't even been pulled in game yet or anything, so I don't wanna like start talking too much about something that may or may not even happen. Okay, so we have uh, 430kc, and that's the only thing we have filled out on the log. I would like to get 10 tents eventually for the upgrade trident, so. Let's get it. Yo, that's the uh, first full trident of the seas drop, which means it's now filled on the collection log. Um, I'll drop the trident over to the main, but I'm just gonna uncharge to get the runes out of it, and then I'll keep the runes for myself. Uh, I guess some people do use this for Scorpia if they get an extra uncharged trident, but uh, I don't feel like doing that. I just want to do Slayer. Actually, that's an Alk. That's a decent Alk value. The full Trident is a 1 out of 512 drop from Kraken. 500 KC now at the Scary Boss. So I've actually filled up the Rune Pouch with Death Runes, especially with that Trident drop. That's 2.5k more Death Runes. We got a almost full Trident as well, so I have to actually start selling these now to a leash shop. There's 600 KC, wrapping up the task. A lot of sharks on the ground too. Here's the collection log now. So we're halfway done kind of, even though I do want to get a lot more tentacles anyways. And we have all these death runes left over too from this task. All right, we got gargoyles again. My blowpipe is running kind of low, 6K darts in here. So um, I mentioned the last time we did the gargoyle boss that I'd only be killing the boss if I need to fill up the blowpipe. So that's what we'll be doing. Plus, they just made changes to Grotesque Guardians with this last update a few days ago. So let's go get geared up for that. And we still have like all these cast runes to sell off. 
I have to empty out the trident too, so there's like all these other runes I have to sell off to Ali Morrisane as well, because the rune pouch is full of death runes already. All right, before we start the grotesque guardians task, we did get this hard clue from Dark Beasts. Yeah, as much as I would like to use the SGS just to flex it off for the spec, um, according to the wiki, Blowpipe is better than SGS. So we have 131 KC here with no uniques besides, of course, the Granite Dust. I really don't care for anything here besides the pet and the jar. We need about 10,000 darts to fill up the Blowpipe, so we'll probably end up doing the whole task here. All right, then here's the setup that uh, I use for Grotesque Guardians. Very basic switch, but it gets the job done. Wait, 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 Rock Hammer, Rock Hammer. I'm not going to do this again. Our PB is 207, so maybe with the the change maybe we'll be able to beat the pb although i probably just got really lucky with that kill that one time i got 207 tied the pb relatively quickly uh after just starting this task but we must have beat it by like a tick or something i don't have the dragon battle axe for the super tax because i prefer to have more inventory space for food slash prayer pots but i did get a super combat last trip which helped a little bit i'm pretty new to grotesque guardians because i pretty much just learned the boss on this account the last time we had the task um, but what I did last time is, if you see that tile that's marked over there, if you start the kill by running to that tile, then running two tiles west, it glitches Dusk, the melee'er, and then you can just pray against Dawn, the ranger's attacks. That's what I did last time, but this task, I've learned that you can just click on Dawn the moment she spawns, and then just stand there prayer flicking. And they're always on the same tick cycle every time, so you know exactly what to expect every single kill. I'm pretty sure that's a thing and that I did this right because no one in the stream yelled at me for doing it wrong. And we all know you can always trust people on the internet to give correct information. One of the changes to the boss now is that there's no longer a purple and orange portal face here. Once Dawn gets to half health, you immediately start fighting Dusk. And before Dust does his glowy orange attack that you just saw, you used to only be able to get two hits in at the start of this phase, assuming you were pretty much tick perfect, but now you can easily get three hits in before that attack. Now here's the orange and purple attack. It makes the boss so much nicer now that it only happens once per kill. Oh yeah, and right here, I'm pretty sure there used to be more of a delay before you could attack Dawn, but now you could pretty much attack her immediately once this phase starts. During this phase, apparently you can out DPS the orbs here, but I don't think it's really viable for me because I have Abbey darts and pretty mediocre gear, but if you have max gear and like rune or dragon darts, um, there's probably a reasonable success rate for it. So it's probably worth it to try out DPSing if you have all of that. But yeah, so last time I did this task, I think I averaged like 11 kills per hour overall. Oh, I remember when the boss first came out, I did try it on my main. And when this situation right here came up, you still took damage even if you were in that corner there, but that was fixed pretty quickly after it came out from what I heard. But yeah, hopefully it should be a little bit more than 11 kills per hour now because first off, all those changes that just came into the game making it easier, and then because I know how to do the boss better. The really cool thing about this boss is it can be as complicated or simple as you want it to be. Like, you could just stand next to Dawn and pray melee and negate like half her attacks, or you can camp prey range and keep standing on top of Dusk so he can't hit you. Whenever they're on the same tick, I just do one of those instead of prey flicking. Anyways, I expect this task will probably take like 13, 14 hours at least, so it'll be like at least two days here. And I guess I'll just check back in when we reach milestones or something cool happens. And also please let me know if you like this style of commentary, just like showing what I learned about the boss. Sometimes I get a little bit carried away with the sacred eel fishing while I'm editing because I fished a lot of sacred eels slash Zora skills last night. All right, beginner. All right, easy. All right. Is that even worth a clip for the video? I don't think I really had any clues this video. Well, not too many. Yeah, we could, we could throw it in there. Wow, that's uh, that's quite the drop there. <laughs> that's the first unique uh, from Grotesque Guardians. Also, I'm pretty sure the rarest one besides like Pet and Jar. Ah, uh, wow, that's that's something. So you can attach those to Bandos boots. Uh, it doesn't have any practical use for me, so that's 3.7 mil for the main, but that is nice to get that uh, checked off the collection log. <laughs> okay, so according to the wiki, that is a 1 out of 1k drop, but you get 2 rolls per kill, so I assume it's essentially 1 out of 500. It's an upgrade to the Bandos boots to make the Guardian boots. I don't have Bandos boots anyways, and if I did, I need the Bandos boots for a stash unit, so no use, unfortunately, <laughs> for uh, the core. But 
Yeah, bond money for the main. It's funny because I care more about the Addy bars more than the black tourmaline core. Wait, can you still get damaged if like the kill ends, but then right at the end of the kill you get sent to that thing there? Chat says yes, that we still take damage. I thought they would have like changed that by now, but I guess they want to be that way. Come on, PB. Oh, it was, yeah. Review two minutes. Uh, 158 now, that was really, really solid. Yo, new PB, 154. I didn't think I'd be being the previous one anytime soon, but... Here we are now. Oh, there's 95 Slayer. There we go. You know what that means after this task? We are going to Konar. No way. They add the Grotesque Guardians outside the Slayer Tower. Oh, you know how much I love to see this. There is 200 KC at the Guardians. That I'm always, always unlucky at. Look at that. The P and the B, it lines up. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Ooh, new unique for the log. Granite Ring. Let's take a look at the stats of that. Okay, here's the stats of the Granite Ring. Uh, this is the imbued version, which doubles the stats, which is the same as any other imbued that you do. So it's pretty much a tanky ring, I guess. Uh, plus 16 range defense. I guess like all the granite armor, essentially, is just like big defense with big range defense. Not useful for this account, though. So yeah, I'm just going to elk that. But... Cool to have that on the collection log now. I'm sorry if anyone out there was trying to grind for the ring. I guess I really took that for granite. And there we go. The Grotesque Guardian's task is now complete, putting us at 289 KC. All right, it looks like from this task, we made about, I think we started with 1.1 mil cash stack. So we made like 3.1 mil in straight up GP. Plus, we also have to die to get these mithril bars out of here. I'll make those into plate bodies and alk those as well. And then we have 550 addy bars to use up. So we're going to quickly make the, well, not really quickly, but we're going to start now making these into dark tips. Okay, so let's log off here and then we'll refresh the high scores and see what our UIM ranking is now for Grotesque Guardians. So with 289 KC, we are ranked 17. <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. Front page with like just two tasks that Guardian's done. And there is 5.5k Addy darts made. That's 82k Fletching XP. And it looks like we used, I think that's like a thousand darts we used for the Guardian's task. And we got back 5.5k darts. If I was just killing Aviancies for Addy bars, it probably would have taken like four to five hours to get that many. Okay, and the last thing we'll do for today is fight a very difficult boss so that way we can make our Mithril plate bodies and alk them and then we'll wrap up. All right, and then it looks like the amount of smithing XP we got from all these bars is about 57k smithing XP. And I guess it was like 270, 280k GP we made just from the mithril plate bodies. And then here's the collection log now for the Grotesque Guardians. We now have two of these slots filled up and I can't wait to come back to them again in the future. Well, we got 95 Slayer now and that means that we are going to finally be heading over to Konar and just doing Konar Slayer from now on until I don't feel like doing Hydra anymore. So hopefully next video we can get a Hydra task and I'll pretty much have to learn Hydra. I have a little bit of experience but not exactly. I'll talk about that more in the next video though but I'm really looking forward to what's coming up next. So thank Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time. By the way, my Twitch chat has been kind of aggressively telling me to plug my stream in the videos more, so if you want to check it out, the Twitch link is in the description of every video, and I stream almost every day, usually starting around 3-4pm to 4 PM Pacific Time. Just keep in mind the videos are still a couple weeks behind real time. But yeah, love ya. Okay, bye.